how far do you think science has taken us to explaining consciousness? Yeah, I think there's a, there's a lot of agreement so far. I think there has been a lot of progress, as Ned says, in all sorts of ways. But more in line with, with what Rebecca said, I think one thing that I believe really holds us back at the moment is I, th I think many people misunderstand the nature of the problem. It's so often presented as a purely scientific problem. It's gone from being something that wasn't seen as serious science to now being seen as just this purely scientific problem of, uh, you know, the challenge of understanding how brains produce consciousness. And then the thought is we just need to plug away at our standard methods of investigating the brain and we'll crack it. But I would argue that what is at root here is, is a philosophical rather than a purely scientific problem, what we traditionally called the mind-body problem. And I think until we confront it as a philosophical problem, we're not going to be able to properly move towards a solution. So I think I'm probably a little bit more optimistic than Rebecca, but I think it's, it's almost like we've taken a philosophical problem, labeled it scientific, and then wondered why science isn't solving it. You know, I think we need to appreciate the science is very important, but there are uh, ineliminable philosophical elements here too. Is consciousness just another word for mind? Do they mean the same thing? No, I think, so look, there's, there's lots of different issues, issues going on here. I mean, I think that the fundamental mind-body problem arises because we have two very different ways of accessing objective reality, perception and introspection. So through perception, we access the, the physical world through our senses, and we've learned how to do that more accurately and precisely through science. Uh, through introspection, we access consciousness through, via our immediate awareness of our own feelings and experiences. Then the mind-body problem is, how do we bring these two seemingly very different things consciousness on the one hand, the physical world on the other, how do we bring them together in a single unified theory of reality? And um, so that, that, that's, that's really the, the core of the mystery. But answering your question, no, there are, there are many aspects of psychology. I think it's undeniable there are many aspects of psychology that aren't at least, don't at least directly correspond to some kind of conscious experience. So for example, you know, you believe Beijing is the capital of China. Now I've mentioned it, you're explicitly thinking about it. But five minutes ago, you weren't thinking about it. But we'd still be happy to say, um, even when you weren't thinking about it, you believed that uh, Beijing is the capital of China. So it doesn't correspond directly to some kind of conscious experience. However, whether ultimately we can explain beliefs and all aspects of psychology in terms of consciousness is um, a hotly debated question, but one I would probably ultimately support.